have been paid. 12 million is not small money, it's my not. sister. It's not small money. And we are taxing people. Mm. In fact, we are moving the country from taxation to robbery instead of to production that we were promised. Now we are robbing everybody. Even your money that you are using to pay them, they tax you on it. So this is robbery. We are robbing people and use it this way. Uh, I, I can't get it. This country called Ghana and all the resources we have. Now government doesn't even see anywhere to tax. They are taxing our electricity also. Tomorrow they will tax our water. And we are not going to sit down for that to continue. That's why I'm saying you are going to have baptism of fire. We need to fight it until this thing is cancelled. And that is the immediate thing. How can you add this to the problems that we have in this country? The lifeline they are talking about is just 30 kWh. 30. It used to be 50. They brought it down to 30. And if you consume, if you have two light bulbs in your house, two, and you have television, and if you leave the television on for more than five hours, you will pay this tax. If you have fridge, you are out. You are going to pay the tax on the fridge. Why should this happen in this country? So our pastors who went to pray at the Galamsi site, Fe- we'll bring that to you Fe- in a bit. Fe- Let's join my brother Castro Senyala. He's joining us from the Upper East region. Fe- Castro, good morning. Thank you for your time. How are you doing? Good morning, Johnny. I'm doing well, uh, except that this morning we are experiencing heavy downpour, mm. uh, but we uh, thank God for the, I mean, the rain anyway. What's happening at the Burkina Bay border? Right, so Johnny, since uh, Monday, uh, a lot has been happening there as far as vehicular traffic is concerned. Um, more than 500 vehicles, uh, as of yesterday, uh, got stuck uh, at the border. Right from, if you know uh, Paga very well, right from the border with Burkina Faso down to Navrongo, the entire stretch of highway was choked. And if I say choked, I mean choked with vehicles and not just smaller vehicles but these are heavy duty cargo trucks fully loaded uh, some with building materials others with uh, uh, fuel others with uh, food items such as um, maize mm-hmm. millet mm-hmm. and then we have others with um, uh, uh, i mean uh, some other i mean uh, materials right. that were being transported from ghana into Burkina Faso, mm-hmm. and it was so bad that uh, the local authorities were not able to manage the situation until yesterday when they got the military and uh, involved, uh, who we understand spent the whole night up to this morning to see how best they are able to clear the blockade. And as we speak this morning, uh, most of the vehicles have been cleared, except a tanker, which almost got bent yesterday. Johnny and I are very emphatic on that. Uh, there was going to be a very big disaster in Pala yesterday because... One of the tankers almost got bent on two occasions, but but for some intervention of the, I mean, the intervention of the military and some locals who took action quickly, uh, that uh, situation was affected. Johnny, this is what is happening at the border. Now we understand that our side of the border may have concerns and be worried, but you are closer to the border. You know what's happening in next land in Burkina Faso. What exactly can you tell us? What's happening on the ground there? Right, so Johnny, information uh, as to why the blockade uh, happened in the first place is very scanty. We we are having different narratives. Uh, firstly, we understand that there was a simulation exercise by security agencies of uh, Ghana at the border together with NADMO. Uh, then we are hearing that um, uh, Ghana is using the digital way means of clearing these cargo trucks, but on the other side of the border, which is Burkina Faso, they still use the manual, and so. Yeah, the flow of traffic uh, on the side of Burkina Faso is very, very slow. 
And for that matter, when Ghana clears, it's difficult for Burkina to clear at the same pace with Ghana. And so that is what has created the blockade. But that, uh, I mean, side of the, the explanation is something that is not going down well with residents who think that it hasn't happened like that. Though Burkina uses manual, it hasn't happened. Then we have other uh, uh, sources very close to the border who enter Burkina and come back telling me that, look, because of the tension, the uh, diplomatic role uh, be between the two countries following acquisitions by uh, the junta in Burkina Faso that some elements were hiding in Ghana or Ghana was housing uh, or is housing or has housed some people who are planning to destabilize the country. Uh, authorities there have asked that vehicles be properly scrutinized to ensure that uh, these vehicles do not transport uh, munitions into their land. And so for that matter, they were taking time to ensure that they look through thoroughly in all those vehicles. But security agencies here and those I've been speaking with have not confirmed that to me. And so I have not uh, run with that narrative. But generally, it is causing a whole lot of uh, uneasiness because as it is today, uh, Paga alone recorded not more than five accidents in the town, including the near tragic fire situation that uh, could have been very disastrous. But all the same, uh, residents this morning who have engaged on phone are happy that uh, at least TV3 carried the story on Ghana tonight yesterday, and uh, that sort of pushed the local authorities to uh, work throughout the night to, I mean, ease the situation. And as of now, uh, women uh, especially who were worried that it was, I mean, posting uh, uh, safety risks uh, on their children as they ride to school now are happy that at least it has been cleared and their children can ride uh, to school and there will not be any cause for worry. Johnny Hughes. What exactly are those trucks we see carrying? Are they food, fuel, what? Yes, uh, the trucks are carrying uh, different kinds of uh, items. Three we have fuel, uh, you know, uh, Ghana, uh, I mean, supply all these uh, trucks come in, pick fuel from Ghana, and then uh, go straight to Burkina Faso and deliver. And then we have food items like millet, maize, and yam also going out uh, of the country into Burkina Faso. Then we have building materials. We have cement, we have iron rod. Johnny, yesterday you should have seen how uh, vehicles numbering about 50 are carrying iron rods, very heavy and lined up on the road so dangerously that you, if you look at the vehicle, you feel that the smallest shake, it will fall down. And mm. these are vehicles that were standing by the roadside, mm. and you see school children meandering, I mean, between these two, I mean, these vehicles on their bicycles, and market women also, you know, here, uh, women rely heavily on motorbikes to, I mean, go about their trading activities. You see women carrying loads on their motorbikes and having to meander through these vehicles. And it was so, I mean, scary to even look at what was happening. And so um, the, the, the other concern was that because there was a blockade, I mean, the concerns from across the border was that these were food items that are uh, being carried. And so if nothing was done about it quickly, it was going to have some, I mean, food price issues on the other side of the border because these were people waiting for deliveries of maize, yam and corn. And uh, here, we're, here they were locked up at the border, a partner. Now, if these things don't get into our country, uh, and I'm sure you've been speaking to deep-throated sources, what, what will be the ramifications for us as a country uh, as we speak? Yes, so uh, the funny thing was that, uh, Johnny, vehicles that were coming in from Ghana, uh, sorry, into Ghana from Burkina Faso had easy access. Um, they, they were... Uh, coming in in, in, in in droplets, if I can use that expression, in the sense that unlike Ghana, which we had almost about 700 trucks packed and were not moving, the other side, I mean, Burkina Faso, vehicles could be coming in like 10 of them at a time, five of them at a time, and that is what got residents, especially in Paga, worried, concerning that if there's a problem, general problem between the two borders, then there would have been a total blockade of uh, movement from both sides. But here was the case Vehicles from Burkina were coming in, but vehicles from Ghana were not allowed inside. And so for us, we didn't really have much of a problem because the vehicles were coming. Those that were carrying uh, 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 onions, for instance, and, uh, uh, you know, onions from Niger, and then some tomatoes from even Burkina Faso, they were able to come in very well. But those who were transporting to Burkina was the problem. And so the concern was that 
it was going to affect, aside from the uh, issue of safety that these vehicles were posing to residents, the other very, very topmost concern was that it was going to slow down business and uh, they were, I mean, they were going to lose a lot of cash. There is this popular man in Saga known as Frenchman. He is very well known because he uh, does business between these two countries. And he spoke up to me and he vehemently cried the impact of, I mean, this uh, uh, blockade on his pocket. He said he would have been able to do a lot of business if the vehicles were moving uh, like they used to. But because they are stuck here, he's losing a lot of money, which would have all come into his pocket. And for that matter, he was not happy at all about the situation. And he wanted government to do, a, I mean, whatever they could, not to let this thing repeat itself, because it's a very bad situation. Also, Johnny, it's mm-hmm. interesting to know that the government has, uh, ex- I mean, M- built an inland port at Saga, a right. very nice one. But then, yesterday's situation, expo- I mean, situation exposed the weakness of that inland port, in the sense that the government felt that it was big enough to contain uh, sometimes a thousand trucks plus when the need arises. But yesterday, Nari, 200 trucks could park there. And so residents, uh, uh, again, I mean, and that triggered calls from residents asking that government needs to come back and expand the inland port and make it big, big so much that when this situation comes in, it will be able to, uh, I mean, uh, 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 take in the excesses of trucks so that it leaves the road open for uh, 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 everyone, I mean, people to use. They also cited instances, for instance, that if yesterday there was, uh, I mean, a, a fire outbreak in any of the houses or any of the government buildings there, um, the fire tender would have had a difficult time getting there to save lives and property. And for that matter, they want government to come back. Yes, government has done well according to them by expanding the inland port at Paga, beautiful one with all the uh, facilities that are needed. But yesterday, I mean, th- this week's blockade, vehicular blockade, exposed the uh, a weakness, a weakness of the that facility, which uh, for them is big enough, and it should be expanded to allow for at least. 500 vehicles to pack at a time. Castro, thank you very much. And congratulations on a big GJ award and, and also the award in the uh, in the <laughs> Upper East region. Thank you very much, Johnny. This is a win for all of us, in fact, for me, the general, at night. And mm. we are happy. May God help us to win more and bring honor and pride to me, the general. I'm proud of you. When you are coming, the dogus and the pokus, it has to come. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. The doggoose and the pokus there, we have to get it. Have you know? Have you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank yeah, you so yeah. much. Thank Yo. you so much, All right. Have a good day. All right. 3FM 92. <laughs> It was not our president who was there. President. <laughs> 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 yeah, president there who collects. What, oh, 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 what, me as a, you know nobody likes paying tax, eh? whether it's head tax, <laughs> eye tax, shall they pay taxes? Or shoe tax. I mean, you know, if you can see where the tax money is going to, I'll willingly pay. But to pay breast tax, and I'm not seeing top there, no, 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 I'll not pay. Breast tax. I'll not pay. Oh my God. Hey. What, something that would compel me to maybe... Uh, pay breast tax maybe if it's something that the government would put towards breast cancer mm. so maybe in the month of october pinktober mm. maybe every time you buy something then we collect it but i have to make sure that it's going to the right place and for the right purpose oh, no, see, yeah, uh, uh, prophet uh, dr kofiodro says so why am i paying all these taxes i'm not seeing it's still wasteful mm. show me what they're using my money for and i'll pay some more yeah yeah man. and that's it tax mobilization and tax utilization that's the conversation as one of the reasons that people are out on the street, you know, asking questions. Exactly. Where are my taxes? You promised to protect the public purse. Where's the public purse? Can we find it? What's inside? How much is inside? And what and are you using it for? And it's not just that. It's, it's it's a fact that we lose a lot of money to tax irregularities, non-compliance, procurement, procurement irregularities. irregularities. In 2022, I believe it was Oxfam, they conducted uh, some research here in Ghana. And in 2022 alone, we lost some 12 billion Ghana cities to tax irregularities and tax issues alone. Alone. 
in 2022, as the years have progressed, we've lost even more money to all manner of, of, mm-hmm. of things. Think about things like judgment debts, mm-hmm. single so- sourcing where we don't get the correct bank for our back. I mean, it's very wasteful I mean, the, the, endeavors. The, the sole sourcing thing, the president in opposition said that it was going to be a thing of the past. Exactly. Dr. Baumia had also tweeted and said that, look, the fact that family and friends are benefiting from sole sourcing was going to be a thing of the past. Exactly. But now we have seen the worst forms of single sourcing or sole sourcing. We have seen it. So... <sighs> it even tells you how weak the minister's understanding of his position is. If what I did was, was, was illegitimate, why don't you take the right action? You, he's going to report me to the minister as if I, as he's, a, as the, the, he's a teacher. And the president is a, is, a, is a master. And I'm what? A school prefect. And I've done something wrong. I mean, what kind of silliness is this? I mean, I, I don't even want to, want, to, want to comment on that. That he reported me to the president. For the president to do what? Call you to order. The president is a lawyer. The president is a lawyer. And he knows that lawyers are supposed to what? To protect the legitimate business of their clients. So why would the president call me on a matter like this? Why, Never why did. would he even go to the president to complain? Because it's not as if he was going to say that when he got the soldiers to, to freeze or stop the people from working, I went to give a counter instructions to the soldiers. 3FM, And the soldiers what, ignored his and took mine. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're calling him, asking questions, snooping around. Isn't that interference, Gabby? No, no but, but really, isn't it what, what, you, what you do? Well, that's it? my job is to snoop around, get information yeah. and all that. And, and my job is not to protect the right of my client? Well, I think he see, he see um, I can't speak for him, but you think the issue to do with Gabby as a person, not no, as but, a lawyer. Yeah, but, but I'm saying that when I called him, and he is in his report, I told him that I'm a lawyer. For the company, if they have all the permits issued legitimately by the state entities that are supposed to issue the permits and licenses, if they are working, then you, the minister, you have no right to interfere. But that is what he did. Yeah, but he found out mm -hmm. what he did is rather what I saw to be interference. Your original minister or area, huh? your lands commission or area, huh? your forest up in my your forest commission or area, and unty as I am them, Miss Ragana for Madam Pamucho, yeah, yeah, one bro, and yeah, yeah, and she man also swap bro. Now, political party, we bow was all over my girl, I'm say, I so. Who come here? We are buffo. We are mamboni. Political party means to say, "Messi, God, I'm saying, God, I'm saying, I'm Masua. Me di makonya ba chuho. God, I'm saying, I'm a bad koso. I di anwa. I ni anu sam. I ni buri. Na me kano. God like Christopher for a dozen. Mama ya ni mriye ni anya ye. Na ewe so mbeja na politicians biya ni area ni koso twenty ni bi biya God I'm saying the people should reject him. Party be authority, pal, uh, this, God, I'm saying, the party should be rejected. Party chairman, party secretaries, party sponsors, you have become a disgrace and a disaster to this nation. We should think about the people. We should think about the poster- posterity. My heart is burning. We should change. And the corruption, 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 almighty corruption, politicians, you are Bremu, Sansuna media, Bremu, Yenina, Sofu, Sorema. Yet we should change and repent and have a different attitude and make Ghana better yeah. for the next generation. This was the speech given by a member of the Christian Council after they went to the Kalamse site to pray. Yeah, 
then the the voice you heard before was that of uh, Gabi Asara Chodako Esquire, mm. his lawyer for CG Alaska, one of the companies mentioned in the Professor Kravnan Fripon Barton's Interministerial Committee Against Illegal Mining Report after yeah. their four year work. Mm. And he says that, well, what the minister did and wrote and said and, you know, reporting him to the presidency was senseless. But all these two are supposed to be helping us to fight Galamsey. And you see the interest. The second clip, I thought it was something that was recent. Mm, no, it's an old clip. Okay. This was after, you remember when the yes. chairman of the Pentecost Church and uh, the, the pastors, they went to the mm. they said, the Sangenera assassin, yeah. Yeah, but in, uh, they, they prayed that God come and stop Galamsey for us, God. Then after that, he made that speech. Do we know if same prayers have been organized this time around? Because I think the turbidity levels have now risen exponentially. Oh, so those prayers, I think, should be intensified at oh, this point. You want to pray? You want to pray? We can organize a part two. Why not? Mm. Why do you appear shocked by that? No, I, but why do you want to pray the problem away? We add it to our reinforcement. That what will happen? That God should help us release ourselves from the shackles of Galamse. And that is going to work? We tried it once. And it worked? We'll try it again. But if it didn't work the first time, why do you want to try again? Or you want to do my try, my play? Because the, 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 who was speaking in the clip that you played, they were very passionate about what was going on. That same passion is required today. I say the people who do galamsey, they go to church. They go? Yeah, they go and give fat offerings. They are, offerings from the pits? Yeah, and they are, they are made chairman of harvest committee and building committee and blah, blah, blah. You know, a pregnant woman fell in a pit that had been dug under her toilet. Yes. Died. She died. Yeah, I'm saying that those people, they go to church, they give offerings. You know, this year, two children also fell in a pit. Somebody lost two of their children mm. in a pit because we're digging everywhere. Mm. You wake up one day and you're, you're, digging, you're home. We're digging the road under the San Greg yes. Road. And you, you are here talking about people's houses being dug under. I mean... Konongo by the roadside. And he was asking a very simple question. Is there no DC who will come and tell us later that I'm the head of the district security council? Don't do this. Regional, regional minister. Hey, short man. Hey. Are they all not there? He said we should pray. Okay. If I don't pray, Satan will make less of me. I will pray. We have to, we can't stop praying. Mm -hmm. I didn't say you should stop praying for this particular problem. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sita St has made a mess out of us already. I mean, Operation Halt. Ghana Did has gold. Halt 2K. Diamond, bauxite, and a gofado cocoa drink. Ah. Uh -uh. Yeah. The water you see. Mm. What's the difference between that and your regular cocoa drink? Because you've seen people eating it with bread. Ah, but if it's not nice, it's not edible. We drink it. Yesterday you said we were drinking it. We are drinking it. 14,000 yeah. NTU. Turbidity levels is it not, off the charts. Is it not cocoa drink? Johnny, what water are you drinking these days? It's the same water. We die together. We are in it together. When the <laughs> government said we are in this together, this is what he meant. Yeah, we are in it together. We are drinking it. It's okay. Everybody's fine. Those who import water into the country to are importing water to drink. Are they watering their own plants in the in their backyards with it? Because it's in the soil. It's in the food that we're eating. Well, All the poison, the heavy metals. <laughs> because if you import water and then you go and eat fried rice full of mercury and cyanide, I don't know who you are doing. Are you joking? At least, man, they, they are not consuming. Or they are importing the yemwadi. No, they are. Yeah, but yemwadi they will import. Yemwadi and kutu they will import already. Uh, anyway, it's true. We import when, everything. When make some noise, you have to make some noise. You have make to make some, some noise. noise. <laughs> it's when Gabon when he, he had these issues. They told us how your and, and Kutuju. Ah, it was coming Gabon. from Gabon. Yes. Gabonese yemwadi yes. and Gabonese and, Kutuju. And onions. Oh, Charlie. Yeah, that's how that's how weak we have become. Or oh, is that what is saving us? That we ourselves saying is mm. or is that the plan? Because we've destroyed all the arable lands. <laughs> so so we just eat the food. Yeah. We destroy the land, then yeah. we import the yeah. food. 
they were they were they smuggled the gold. Oh, Charlie. They were just there. They would drink 14,000 NTU water. <sighs> hey. Let's pray. Let's pray. If Daniels can pray, oh, if GUC can pray. The, the problem will go. We'll wish it away. It will go. We'll pray. We'll pray over the problem. Yeah. That's all. We'll pray over the problem. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but what, what again are you expecting? Government set up. What did they set up? A committee, task force, a new task force mm -hmm. on this renewed fight against Galamsey. Mm -hmm. I don't know what those talks are going to yield mm -hmm. because we've been talking and talking and talking and talking. We are not going to talk anymore. We should just drink it and be going. Yes. Eat the food and be going. Yes, that's all. What are you going to What are you going to talk about? If we put ourselves in a meeting, what are we going to talk about? Stop galam saying now. And what sense would that make? Mm -hmm. It won't make any sense because we know the people who are engaged in galam say. We know the very people who have been mentioned. Some of them are on their way to parliament. Who has been held accountable? Who has the president had the balls to say, you, I've heard. Look at what the 2472 is doing. Yeah. He hears that you are a chief. You are involved in Galamse. He calls you. He distools you. Mm. Who has our president disappointed? Because the person was fingered in Galamse or asked the person to step aside. Who? Name one person. Just one person. It was Charles Bishop on his own volition and I will not do this work again, he left. That's right. Aside him, who has been mentioned that the president of the republic who said, I am prepared to put my presidency on the line. And we know that that was a lie, it's a scam. Who has he been able to say that you, I appointed you so, so, and so, and so, and so, and so, and so. Now I'm not getting so, so, and so, and so, and so for him. So leave. What useful thing has our Minerals Commission said about this Galamse thing? Tell me one useful thing they have said. One, one, just one useful. They said we are in this together. That's a foolish thing to say. You have been clothed with the power to prevent people from going there to go and do whatever they do. Mm. You have left the people to go and destroy the place. You have come back to say we are in this together. You and who are in what together? If the guy in me comes out this morning, please. they will say why. And will be why? coming down. Can we get Johnny some water, please? National Disaster Management Organization. Have you heard any useful thing from them? Nadmo. Yes. Oh. This year they haven't been so busy because our the floods have come our down. Our council of state were very well paid, so privileged. Have you heard anything useful from them? Hmm. Have you heard anything useful from them? About Galamsey. Our Minister for National Security, our Minister who is able to model in front of a camera for a young girl to say, what are you wearing? Pyjamas, turn light, turn left, lift your leg, do this, do that. Has he said anything useful about our Galamsey, this Galamsey thing? I'm asking you. I haven't said any, Johnny. Our Minister for the Interior. Mm. Has he said anything useful about this Galamsey fight? A minister for the defense. Has he said anything useful about this Galamse? Our national security coordinator, our director of NIB, those Danko Institute boys, have they said anything useful about this Galamse? Have they? A minister for gender, children, and social protection. Has a, have my own sister, Dakwani Mama MP, has he said anything useful about this Galamse thing? And you, you, you ask yourself what the duty bearers really are doing. Mm. And there are DCs <coughs> in these Galamse prone areas. The DC, if I were the president, the DC in Konongo would have been gone a long time, to, along with the minister. Mm. People are mining illegally and they are endangering the only road that connects Accra to Kumasi. And you are watching and they have not been disappointed. Nobody has sacked them. Nobody has reprimanded them. They are still at post. They will finish their, their, their nonsense and come and take ex gratia of the money that we don't have. And you want me to believe that if we pray, every, everything will be well. Hmm. No, I'm asking you. 
encouraging us that we should I go and don't, pray again. I don't, because, because we've we done pray. it before. Yeah, and so, at the time when so we didn't have, you we we didn't have again, 14,000 NTU, at the time the turbidity levels were not off the charts. We've organized prayers in, in this country for far less mm. atrocities. And what did that bring to us? I'm not against where, prayer. Where, 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 I'm not against prayer. I, I believe don't want in to even prayer. call out any grouping this morning because the weekend is here. I believe, in, no, I believe, I in, I believe in prayer. Mm. I'm not against prayer. I'm saying, but in this particular instance, what will prayer... If, look, listen to the president. Mm. If you had done just this, in the two minutes, eight seconds clip, we wouldn't be here talking. This, this is our president. Listen to him. Illegal mining. That is what I'm against. I babe haye. I ne tebi. Tuma hinkro. The brim. I am a boy. And number one, I eat two sikawumu. Then so bread, meaning I say, it means cause us mining along the water bodies cannot continue if we want to preserve the nature and our system. Cannot continue. But this is I say, galam say for all say, it's a pass and miss me, baby. Dim Rano so or on so that election I bay MPP for who become. May they hear me say, May it be a young couple who are catching me say, They hear some about the year. I don't hear me. Now, me baby, and she say, Yeah, a bad boy man on Kosovo. I don't hear me. Near election as them. Then she say, I bet you me, I am a man or man and ya in Kosovo. Yes, what he said in this clip, just that. Do you think we will be in the mess we find ourselves? In? Absolutely not. Where are the drones that we bought with our money? Good question. Why can't we hand the drone over the drones over to those who are fighting Galamse? Did we buy the drones? Did we not buy the drones? Where is the money? Mm. Where are the drones? Yesterday we spoke to somebody from Russia. Yeah. Or some we spoke about people and in Russia, Ghanaians right. taking to Russia by one man supporter, promised them a Greek and security jobs. Now they are on the front line of fighting the Russian war. That's right. And they say there are drones surrounding the building. Mm -hmm. If you lose guard and you come out your head, they go shoot you. Yep. We have drones. Where are our drones? Where are our drones? And you see, the joke of the, of the season is where you find people who come and sit on radio and TV and talk tough and you find them wearing bulletproof and you roaming around or catch a chair and the rest at Galamsey site. Then they'll finish and go and stand on MPP stage and endorse Baumia and the rest. The people who are doing Galamsey are sitting behind you. And then you endorse them and you go into the Galamsey site. Who are you fooling? Who, who are you fooling? 
Who, who are you taking advantage of? Who are you fooling? The people's eyes have opened, though. Mm. The people know that you are you are being wicked to them. <coughs> All of a sudden, I'm hearing messages like, we are in this together. Let's take a holistic My, approach. M, I, an MPP senior Let's friend, all come together. An MPP senior friend of mine said, oh, I have a big platform. I should appeal to the conscience of the people. I said I was appealing to the conscience of the people to stop this mm. until I got to know that when you lied to all of us and fooled all of us to begin, and I'm using the word, we were fooled mm. to believe that we had banned all forms of mining. And yet... Only for us to know that the same people who said they had banned all forms of mining had taken a, an ally to parliament from cabinet to say, allow people to go and mine in forest, forest reserves. reserves. And while the mining ban was on, and legitimate miners, small-scale miners who had gone to banks to go and collect loans, borrowed monies from people, bought machinery, they were at home and scratching their sore and bleeding. We're allowing party cronies and our friends to go into the forest reserves to go and mine. We were fooled to believe that. That was when I decided that I won't appeal to anybody's conscience. Mm. I will speak truth to power. But that's like somebody saying, arm robbery is illegal. Speak, oh, you have a platform. When you go this morning, speak to the conscience of, what, of the, of what the, the, of what the government robbers. and its elements are doing, which is what has given those galamseers the brazen... Um, authority to be saying things and recording themselves in videos yes is akin to somebody stealing your money for lunch putting it in his back pocket and turning around to help you to look for your lunch money it's only a thief and a liar who can do that it's an exercise in futility you search and search because the person is helping you to look for the money the you, money is in the you back genuinely pocket. think that the person is helping you to look for your lunch money because you are hungry the person has finished eating oh and say, oh, Helen, you can't find your money. Oh, let me help you. So me and Abiyam, we join you. But uh, we have taken your money and put it in our back pocket. Me and Abiyam, we are helping you to find your money. When we know that we have eaten, you have not eaten. But we are helping you to find the money that we know we have. We are punishing you. Just because you decided that, oh, these are the kind of leaders I wanted. Mm. When I was in primary school, I was taught that water is colorless and is odorless. If I take my son of Brimpon to the Ancobra River, to the Pra River, the Brim River, all those rivers that have been polluted, and I tell him that water is supposed to be odorless and colorless, I'm sure he will look at me like a fool. He will think of him, this man is crazy. This water I see, is this odorless and colorless? We have a generation of Ghanaians who, are, who have never seen our waters looking and, clear. And they will never see that in a very long time if they, this nonsense doesn't stop. We have a generation of Ghanaians, young people. My son of Rimpo, this Galamsi fight started uh, eight years ago. Mm. In fact, it predates this. And I've, I'll say this, Galamsi predates the Fourth Republic. Mm. People have done, where does the alluvial gold and all the conversation come from? Mm. Alluvial gold, whatever, surface mining, whatever, where does it come from? What we are talking about are people buying chamfang and people buying excavators and taking them and messing up everything. If I take my son or Brimpon to uh, Pakro in the Eastern region, where I used to, we used to go and camp or go more somewhere as a boy scout, and I show him the dense river, I'm sure he will look at it and I tell him water is odorless and colorless. He will look at it and laugh. He will think that I'm a foolish man. He will think that's how the rivers are supposed to look like. Yeah, that's but, all he knows. Yes, but then he, I will be defining for him what the scientists have written. Mm. And he'll be looking at me and thinking, ah, but dad, who, uh, what is it? What is, the water is not colorless. It's not, odor, it's not odorless. It's, the water is colorful. And it's odorful, if there's a word like that. I, it doesn't make any kind of sense. It doesn't make any kind of sense. What we have now is a very senseless and very inhumane and very disrespectful and very, very dangerous way of living. Mm. Anybody who stands up against people who are asking for Galamse to stop must have his head examined over and over again. Anybody, it doesn't matter who, how old you are. 
anybody it doesn't matter what how qualified you are anybody it doesn't matter how rich you are who will stand in the way of people asking for galamsey to stop he must have his head re-examined and examined again because there's something wrong children are being born without limbs children are being born with kidney and liver problems Mm. Children are being born with their eyes having, uh, what you call it, uh, deformities and defects. That's right. Pregnant women are looking anyhow. Young people who don't drink and smoke, they have kidney issues. They queue up and we don't even have kidney dialysis machines to deal with them. Johnny, talk of cancer. A rise in cancer cases. Different kinds of cancers. Anybody who stands in the way of anybody who wants to fight Galamse and make sure it stops, that person, if he's not a witch, he's a wizard or is mad and must be examined. Anybody, it doesn't matter who you are. And this whole point of we are in this together, let's come. We, are, we have never been in this together all. I've always said that we, as a media coalition, when engineer Dr. Kenda Shigbe was leaving, leading us to do this, we meet a coconut groove. Mm. Most every two weeks. We were strategizing. In those days, when you pick the newspapers, you find a portion dedicated to Stop Galamse. You remember that? I do. On all the front pages. And then we decided that, oh, we will lose God. Let government come and say, oh, we will help you to fight Kalamse. Kebashimbe. That was it. When the government entered, they brought in, they took people's fathers, 400 police, military, immigration officers. They took them into the Kalamse pits. They went to see the money. There was no control. They themselves got interested in They got to a point where the security agencies were now more interested in going on those Galamse duties because of what they could get. Why did Captain Mahama, who was posthumously given the rank of a major, why did he die? Why did he die? Leaving behind his young family and his beautiful wife and his beautiful children. Why did he die? He died because of Galamse and he died for nothing. For nothing. He was lynched and killed for nothing, Captain Mahama. He died for nothing. For nothing he died. He was killed just for nothing, Captain Mahama. He died for nothing. Why did he die? Why did he die? Then when you finish, you come and tell me we are in this together. The DCE under whose watch Captain Muhammad died as district security boss. What happened to him? Has Galamse stopped? That should have been the first part of call where we say, as for this place, because of the death of Major Maxwell Muhammad, all Galamse activities should cease. Absolutely. Go to the, the, the Entrobasi. Go there. Go and check what is happening there. So, so how does any, any person in this right frame of mind Come to tell me, Johnny Hughes, Helena Piampofu, Six Tools Don Ulu, Abiyam, Nanama from uh, 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 Gimpa, Faustina. How does anybody convince us as right thinking members of society that, oh, we are in this together? And when there was a ban on mining in this country, we we're still buying gold and giving it to PMMC and others to go and sell on behalf of the Republic of Ghana. We have banned mining, but we're getting gold to sell. <laughs> Where were we stealing the gold from? <clears throat> from God's armpit. I'm asking you. Johnny. We said we had banned mining. Mm. So mining was not happening. Eh? If you don't mine, you won't get the gold. That's right. But we were getting gold to give to PMMC and others to go and sell on behalf of the, of the Republic of Ghana. So where were we getting the gold from? I'm asking from God's armpit or where? When you have people who 
engage in lies to lead you and mislead you. Paper leadership. This is what you get. Paper leadership. Yes. There's no action. I said, what has the minerals, what useful thing has our minerals commission said about what is going on? Where does the, where does the licenses come from? Mm. They come from my mother Comfort's kitchen. If you remember me, in the kitchen hall. Johnny. No, I'm asking you. What's going on? I said, the, the licenses mm. for mining in forest reserves, where does it come from? For prospecting, where does it happen? Where, where does else? it come from? Where else? What useful thing has our minerals commission said? And why is everybody sitting comfortable there? If I were president, I would have sacked all of them. But we don't have a president. What do you mean? But if you had a president... You had him at the UN. You didn't? The laws, in New York? The laws of the country says that all the minerals in the country are vested in the president. That's right. If I vest every property I have in you, in media general here, mm. and you see somebody digging, what do you do to the person? You have to act immediately. So if you are not asking, are you existing? Oh, okay. That is the basis. Well, it's not yes. about uh, having a president, Nana Dodanko Kufuado, we have it on paper, mm. representing us, making Action. speeches. You know what I'm saying? In this instance, and in this particular context, all the minerals, if you wake up tomorrow and you find diamond in your house, mm. eh, and you can identify that there was diamond under my mother's kitchen, and you decide that you want to break it, you have to first of all tell them, because the minerals are vested in the president. That's right. So if somebody, people are now digging under, you mentioned that people are digging under people's toilets, pregnant right. woman is caving in, died, children caving and dying. dying. And the person in whom the minerals are vested is doing nothing about it. People are not being arrested. People are not being picked up. In China, people are picked up and shot because they did this. Can you tell me that you have somebody who in whom these things are vested? Hmm. There's nobody. It's a free for all. Yes, because I'm, I'm giving you basis hmm. that all the minerals you find in the country are vested in somebody. Yes? And that person exists. And whose power and authority? And people are taking what is vested in that person on behalf of the people and held in trust on behalf of the people. And nothing is happening to those people. Can you then say that that person exists? Mm. That's the basis of my question. Mm. That's the basis of my question. We'll take a break. When we return from drink the water. break, I will Johnny give you the microphone. Water. You drink will water. tell me what is on your mind. I will dash you manifest. And then when we finish... We'll get back to the conversation because this Galam said it must stop today, 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 today. We must stop it. This October, come and encounter Jesus in a way you've never experienced before. The Maker's House Chapel International presents Experience Conference 2024 under the theme Jesus from 6th to 13th October. Join us for a week of divine connection 